Yellow Stising Guide highlights little known danger in the park. A surprising steam eruption in Yellowstone National Park's geyser basin that sent people running for safety as basketball-sized rocks flew overhead has highlighted a little-known danger that scientists hope to someday be able to predict. Tuesday's hydrothermal explosion in Biscuit Basin caused no injuries as dozens of people fled along a boardwalk before the boardwalk collapsed. The blast sent rocks, steam, water and soil into the air, according to a witness and a scientist who reviewed video footage of the incident. The explosion occurred in a park filled with geysers, hot springs and other hydrothermal features that draw millions of tourists each year. Some, like the famed Old Faithful, erupt like clockwork and are well understood by scientists who monitor the park's seismic activity. But the type of explosion this week is less common and less understood, and potentially more dangerous because it comes without warning. This highlights that even small events, and this one is relatively small in the scheme of things, although dramatic, can be really dangerous, said Michael Poland, principal scientist at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. We've gotten pretty good at understanding the signs that a volcano is active and might erupt. We don't have that knowledge base for hydrothermal systems like the ones at Yellowstone. Poland and other scientists are trying to change that with a new monitoring system recently installed at another of Yellowstone's geyser basins. The system measures seismic activity, deformation of the Earth's surface and low-frequency acoustic energy that can signal an eruption. Hydrothermal explosions are believed to occur when water in the vast network of natural pipes beneath Yellowstone becomes clogged, Poland said. A clog can cause the heated, pressurized water to instantly turn to steam and explode. Tuesday's blast came without warning. Witness Vlada March, who recorded widely circulated video of the blast, said steam began billowing out of Biscuit Basin, and within seconds, it became a big thing. It exploded and it became like a black cloud that covered the sun. Mach's tour guide, Isaac Fisher, told the Associated Press that he heard a hiss coming from Cliffpool and told his group it was unusual. It sounded like a geyser that shot 60 to 70 feet, 18 to 21 meters, into the air for a few seconds and then, ba-boom, he said. You feel the shockwave hit your chest and vibrate the bones in your chest, he said. The explosion was so significant, you felt your legs shaking. You felt the sidewalk shaking and you felt everything shaking. He estimated the entire incident lasted about 25 seconds as a plume of debris shot about 100 meters, 328 feet, into the air. I can't believe no one was hurt, Fisher said. There were rocks flying over our heads, the size of basketballs. Macha's mother, who was closest to the eruption, pulled her hoodie over her head and face and was not injured, Fisher said. Some of the rocks thrown into the air were about a meter, 3.3 feet, across, Poland said. Yellowstone encompasses a large, dormant volcanic caldera that shows no signs of erupting anytime soon, but provides heat for the park's famous geysers, hot springs, mud pots and other hydrothermal features. Though much less common than geyser eruptions, Hydrothermal vents occur frequently enough at Yellowstone to warrant study and a safety concern. Scientists don't know if they'll ever be able to predict the blast, Poland said. For a geologist, seeing an earthquake firsthand is a blessing. That's what happened in 2009, when Montana Tech geology professor Mike Stickney and several other geologists were near the site of Tuesday's blast in the Biscuit Basin. It just happened so suddenly and without any real warning, just standing there on the sidewalk. There was just a whoosh and it was over. Nobody saw it coming, Stigney said, although it didn't register on sensitive seismometers at Old Faithful, 
A few miles, 3.2 kilometers, away, he estimated the recent blast was 10 times bigger. But the data didn't include any obvious precursors, which could potentially be used to develop a warning system. Long-term studies of where hydrothermal explosions and other ground disturbances might occur in Yellowstone are the focus of University of Wyoming geology professor Ken Sims, who has used ground-penetrating radar and other techniques to identify problem areas. That information is critical to building roads and bridges in Yellowstone.